Well, hello. Hello. How are you? Are you well? Are you? Oh, that's ever so good. I'm very pleased. So, hello. I'm just going to open a laptop quickly in order to remind me what my name is. Oh, yeah. My name's Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And and uh, got the window open because it's been really nice day today like particularly nice only listen when you can safely close your eyes if i've not already said it i might have literally just said it but it's automatic so i don't notice when i say it i'd like to say a big welcome to julia for joining the jason newlands boring group on facebook molly rose posted a welcome julia so welcome and please if you're part of the group say a big welcome as well and if you'd like to join the group then please come along it's basically for my super fans you know the ones with superpowers the ones that are just they're just they're not just normal fans they're actually really super really really super don't you know Where's my water? There it is. Oops. Oops. I've got the door open, the living room door open. Which means that basically any sound outside the window and any, si any sound outside of the hallway, kind of, you know, the communal area, he will be barking. So this is going to be one of those where I will be having to edit a little bit but it's okay because I need the air to flow a little bit because otherwise it's going to be a bit stifling you know so the last hour I have been listening to Michael Jackson on Amazon Music on my TV and I've been going through my paperwork all the different stuff you know old bank statements in fact i want to get them i'm gonna read some of the stuff out to you oh wait a second oh. because i've been i'm basically destroying most of it but i've kept a few little bits i've not finished yet i've still got another pile and there's a huge pile of shredded up paper on my city so I need to stick that into a bag but this is some of the stuff that I kept that I hadn't seen for years stuff dating back well years so things like um, details of employee leaving work this is the 10th of the 8th 2011 um my private oh wow i forgot i lived there 2011 oh right this is the um i had a job yeah blimey i was bullied out of that job and i was a receptionist for what date was that the eighth so i stayed there i was there for eight months I managed to stay there for eight months until I just had to leave. I had to get out. And because uh, the woman was just horrible. Which is weird because we got on before that. When I was volunteering, we got on really well. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that. The next thing is the insolvency service. This is from 10th of June 2014. The Insolvency Act 1986. Debt relief order. I'm not going to give you that one. And so my name, my address, former address, former address to that. And yeah, wow. So before I moved here, I lived at three different addresses in this town 
So this is, what date was this? 10th of June 2014. And yeah, so that was also went bankrupt in 2006, can you believe? Not been great with money over the years. <laughs> uh, here is this, right, what is it? 10th of June, 5th, 19th. It didn't take long. The I went through a charity called Step Change, Debt Charity, and they're based in Leeds. It's a, a, a national company. So they said, thank you for your debt relief order paperwork. We're now processing this for you. This is May 2014. So it only took just over a month. It can take us a couple of weeks to process your application. So in the meantime, we recommend you make a payment of one pound to each of your creditors. Wow. That was a big thing to do, you know, to just say, phone them up and say, here's a pound. It's difficult, very difficult. Um, I should tell you at this time, at this time, I was, I'd been ill and I'd just been diagnosed for the second time with bipolar and the personality disorder, blah, 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 all that stuff. So all that juicy stuff. So I wasn't working, I wasn't well, and I had, I was living on bare minimum. I was on very, very basic. I think I had about 30 pound a week to get by. I even had to pay towards my rent because they weren't covering all of the rent. So yeah, that was, so that's why I had to, I couldn't afford to pay off the stuff. And, ah, uh, so there you go. These, so I'm keeping hold of these things. These are quite important documents. I'm keeping hold of that. This is HM Revenues and Customs. What date? This is year 2007, 2008. Uh, it doesn't say anything. Because I was at university at that time, so I had some part-time work. And then, uh, what's this one? Certificate of Paying Tactical, tactical, tactical <laughs> Benefit. This is uh, 2016. So again, that, that was that's not really valid to anything. But I'll tell you what I found that was just mildly interesting. And I don't really know why I kept it. But I've kept pay slips, my last pay slips, from the insurance job I had. Now, I used to keep pay slips for years. Yeah, you know, I had pay slips from 2004, you know, right the way up to about 2011. I used to hold on to them and then I destroyed everything. But for some reason, for some reason, I kept hold of a few of the pay slips from the car insurance job I had in 2000, which it was um, December I started, December 2000 and, or was it November, something like that, 2012. And there is one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I've got eleven pay slips from that company. And it's just weird. I just got I just got the dates. They're not in order. I suppose they could be in order if I put them in order. Um, I do. So what is this? What date is this? Twenty eighth for the second, two thousand thirteen. Twenty eighth second. I can't bother to put. It. So 
here's I'll tell you exactly what I took home during that time so I had Nash my no notional salary I don't know what that means I guess just a standard salary one thousand eighty three pound and thirty three pence so that's what I got I got a shift premium I don't remember that of twenty four pound for the month so what's that one pound a day or something uh, my target bonus I earned three hundred and forty four pound twenty two. So I didn't get any tax for that because this is quite early into the to the year. This is a second, and then I found out that I didn't pay. Yeah, this is weird. They didn't because I was self employed previous to this, and when I did my self employed thing. I didn't include my wages here because I was paying tax after April. So I just sh assumed that I hadn't reached a threshold or something and I ended up with a £2,000 tax bill which took me, I think, four years to pay off. I got that in about 2014. Yeah, so I did. They just basically took money out of my account every week for about four years, I think. Hmm. Um, so I remember when I got it and I thought oh no really and they said oh yeah how much can you pay because I phoned them up how much can you pay every week um, well I've got £35 coming in at the moment after I paid everything that's so much I've got left after I paid the extra rent and the phone bill and things like that they said so can you pay £120 a week? <laughs> like, <laughs> are you listening to me? <laughs> and um, he basically, he got a bit annoyed with me, I think, because I wasn't being rude. I might have been rude, but I didn't mean to be rude. And he put me in touch with someone else. And when I told them... The conversation that I'd had with his colleague, he burst out laughing. Just of how ridiculous it was that they were asking for a hundred and twenty pound a week, when, I mean, it's two grand, so I understand why they were trying to get the money back, but oh, it was two and a half grand, so it's two thousand four hundred something like that, and they like, no, you know, of course you can't pay that so I ended up paying I don't remember how much it was but I paid it back anyway all got paid back oh my stomach's going rumbly 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 tummy tummy so this was so I didn't pay any tax on this one so I took home £1,341.44 I did however pay my student loan £12 off the student loan national insurance was £98.11 so that was that one. The next one, they're not in order. They're in order as well as rather, you know, kind of the order that I'm going to read them, but they're not in order date wise. So this next one, uh huh? That's weird. Um,. That's very strange. I don't understand this one at all. I think this might have been... Uh, no. Is this... I think this is a... This, was this when I'd left? I think this is when I left. EMDM... Is it the same company? Yeah, it is. Earnings to date, 8,000. Okay, so this is basically a closing, like a bye-bye. Tax period 6, 30th of the 9th, 2013. And by then, this, I guess there was... I was still getting paid, I think I was. 
I was getting statu statutory sick pay of £48, pound, uh, £485.52 pound a week, uh, a month rather. But then it says payment methods direct, £27.25. So I'm a little bit confused about this, to be honest with you. I don't really understand that. So I'm just going to ignore that. Because there was a period when it basically... The money, the statute... I can't say the word. Statutory... Statutory... Stat, you know, you try and say it. <laughs> you try and say it with my mouth. Um, statutory... Statutory... I know what the word is anyway. Um, statutory. Yes, statutory. I think I said it right. I can't believe how excited I am. Not genuinely, I can't believe I'm excited over something quite as mundane as that, but hey, it's something. So, oh, I got a phone call from a doctor. Got to tell you this. I, I, you know, I don't generally tell you about my... I try and keep things light, and you might disagree with that, but I do try to keep things more jovial, and because this is supposed to be a a light-hearted podcast, and I do, you know, I also do open up and tell you stuff that's going on um, as well, because I'm a human being, and I don't, I can't always. You know, sometimes it's because I haven't made a recording for quite a while, and I have to let you know why, because. It just seems fair. You 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 um, support me by listening, so I support you by recording. You know, it's kind of a two way thing. And without you listening, there'd be no there'd be no reason there'd be no reason for me to get up in the morning. To be honest, so this is this is what keeps me going. Anyway, that was a bit heavy, wasn't it? I do apologise. The pressure, the pressure. Now we have to listen to this idiot forever. No, don't call me an idiot. I hate that word. You call yourself an idiot. You just said it. No, shh, 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 shh. Calm down. So, doctor, I basically, last week or the week before, I can't remember, I had an appointment to have blood tests at the doctor's surgery. And it's partly because of the medication I'm on for the bipolar and stuff. It's, it's, um, you know, I'm supposed to get tested to make sure that it's not affecting me. Because, you know, medication can have side effects and stuff. And I've been on it for quite a while now, over 10 years. Yeah, blimey. 10 years, yeah. 2014, I think I started on it. So I've been on it for 10 years nearly. So, uh, I've, I, so I made the appointment because they called me up and said, you need to make an appointment. I said, all right. Because you need to have a... A medication review. I said, okay. I said, uh, so you need to come and see the doctor. I said, okay. I hear you. You've, you don't have to keep repeating yourself. And she said, Mr. Newland, if you're going to be rude, I'm going to hang up. I said, you phone me. <laughs> no, none of that happened. Um, so I had this appointment. It was 11 o'clock, either last week or the week before. I couldn't face going out. I genuinely couldn't face it. I couldn't, I just could not face, and it's not going out, You, I mean, you could argue, but you go out every day with the little one. Yeah, I do, but it's, it doesn't have to be a long distance, you know, it's to the park, or if I'm not up to that, I take him in the garden, and just, you know, that's usually if it's really raining heavily. But I do make the effort, and I do go to walk maybe in the fields, and I do take him out. But it's, I don't know, it's a different thing. It's different. And you know what? I can't take him with me. And I'm used to having him with me. And I think maybe he's a bit of a camf comfort. He's a bit of a comfort blanket for me, I think. As I probably am to him. I mean, right now he's he's sitting up underneath me. But he's leaning against my leg. Now he's laying down, but he's leaning against my leg. He has to be touching me. You know, because that's... A comfort thing, I suppose. And you know something I've noticed? Outside of the the sounds that distract him and get him going, I can't do a huge amount about that. When I'm talking, 
and he's listening to me, he does fall asleep. I think he quite, <laughs> he quite likes listening to me talking. I don't know why. It's a bit weird. So I, the doctor phoned me up anyway because I cancelled the appointment. I cancelled in time, so I cancelled uh, so that they could fill, you know, get, get someone else in so I didn't just not turn up because that's just, I don't do that anymore. I mean, I lost my NHS dentist because of that and that wasn't even my fault. That's, well, I know it's good to try and blame other people but my friend, he went out and he's supposed to be back and I was looking after his dog and he didn't come back and I was stuck with his dog and he's not answering his phone he's like I can't leave his dog up here I can't leave his dog downstairs because he'll trash the place I'm like okay so I did phone and cancel um, but, you know but it wasn't a lot of notice and they struck me off um, it struck me off NHS anyway I could continue but I'd have to be private and then that caused loads of problems at the beginning of the year with my toothache and my, um, what did they call it? My dumb, dumb, dumb teeth it got removed. And the thing is, that cost a fortune. However, I'm on a list now because I'm going to be, I've got an appointment with them in, I think it's November. I'm going to have to re-look at that because I don't want to miss it. And I'm going to be on their NHS list I think because I because I paid money because I get so they've had some money out of me and they've probably looked at my teeth and thought yeah we'll get some money out of him NHS because they can do lots of work and get they're going to get paid for it so they probably figure I've got nice lots to do in the future which I hope I really hope not uh, really oh anyway so the, the, anyway, the, the the doctor phoned me up, and I was in the park. I was actually, I was walking, taking Vinny out for a, a thingy. Just realised, just said the word. I took him out for a a stroll, and as I was going into the park, my friend's daughter was coming out, and she starts screaming, "Vinny, Vinny!" and because she loves him, she's. She absolutely loves him. She he loves her as well. I think she's nine, eight, eight years old. So her mum, who I know, I said to her, "Is your mum in the park?" She said, "Yeah." I said, "Okay." And um, she took the lead off me, uh, the, the girl, and then I just she followed me, and I went to the went to the park, sat down with her mum, chatted and stuff, and that her daughter was running around, had it, had Vinny off the lead, and she was running around all over the park, her and her friends, and. Having a, having a well of time. He, he was loving it. And it was warm. He was really, really enjoying himself. And at one point, there was, there, was, there was a football match going on in the school. So there were some parents, the other side of the, the, the fence side of the park, watching the kids play football. And then there was another football match being played between, you know, like jumpers as goals in the field, in the park. So I was about to walk through and I oh no, so I walked around so I wasn't on the on their pitch. And when I sit down, I'm there for about five minutes talking and suddenly a ball comes towards my friend, lands on the floor, she kicks it back right at my face just missed literally it skimmed my head okay it, it it might not skim my head but it was over my head but I really thought it was gonna hit me in the face because and because it was so fast uh and for some reason I had my hands underneath my feet <laughs> it's just like I like to sit like that it's comfortable and I just oh and I shook her hand and said, thank you for not kicking that in my face. Because she could be a little bit accident prone sometimes. She broke the, the bench outside. I mean, it was it was completely mouldy and it wasn't working anymore. And it was only a matter of time, but she sat on it and it just crumbled. Um, another time, 
my friend downstairs had a bottle of vodka. It's not really, well, it's relevant to the story, what kind of bottle, what kind of alcohol is not relevant anyway, but it's relevant to the fact that he was not happy. <laughs> she said, I'll get your steak out, Luke. And he said, she, he said, no, 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 just, and he said, oh, go on. So he did. He got the snake out. She held the snake, and the snake whipped its tail and split the bottle of vodka in half, sliced it in half, which I didn't even think it was possible. I saw it. It completely, I guess it just probably chipped it, and it just fell apart. But it's like, wow. He said, she, she's just, she's, she's an accident. She's an accident prone. He was so annoyed. <laughs> um, so yeah, as is, yeah. She what did she do? She she chucked a ball in the field and it went into the pond, and Vinny re- jumped into the pond and it's like I didn't know if he was going to get out or not. Like well, I'm going to have to jump in after him, but I didn't have to. He's still there, <laughs> swimming around. He's happy. He's been there for a year. So I, so my doctor phoned. Oh no, the doctor phoned when I was in the park, and they said to me that um, I sent me a text yesterday saying we need to organise a uh, a medicine review, medication review. And choose when you want it, and they gave me an option on the app. No, it's just a it's a it's a link. So I just clicked okay to tomorrow, which was today. Yesterday, tomorrow was today. But then they said, Oh yeah, between twelve PM and six PM. That's over three hours. That's a long, long time to be waiting around for a phone call. I mean you might argue, but JJ, you don't do anything anyway, you just you're lazy. It's not the point. It's not the point. I'm not lazy. Am I lazy? I don't think of myself as lazy because I feel, and to, I know it's it's just a personal, it's a feeling, just a personal, um, yeah, just personal to me is how I feel about myself. Is that I'm doing something worthwhile. And I'm spending my time doing worthwhile things. Not all the time, admittedly. You know, if I'm watching Netflix, and that's not necessarily a worthwhile thing, but it is giving me um, fodder for thought. Is that the right, correct term? It's giving me ideas, maybe. And I've got my phone next to me, and I, I started texting myself ideas. So for my Hotmail account, I text to my Google account. Just silly lines, silly ideas, silly thoughts and stuff. And just, just you know, that's a new thing I started doing. I thought about getting a dick to dick, dick to dictator, not dictator, dict. You know, there's things that dictate. But it's not a dictator. It sounds wrong because a dictator is, is a bad word, isn't it? Dictator. Um dicta machine dictaphone is it dictaphone you know where you record yourself but they're like little i used to have one years ago 1991 when i first started doing stand-up um there was a bloke who was a comedian called nick wilty he, he used to call himself wilty and then then he called himself nick wilty but wilty he was known i've always known him as wilty although i haven't seen him for a long long time and he was already good. He was doing open spot nights, the same as me, but he was already, he was winning. Every time he did it, he won. I mean, there was three comedians at that time that would win. Like, they'd, they'd take turns winning. Uh, Harvey O'Leary, Nick Realty. Oh, I had to, Vinny started barking, I had to put him into the bedroom. I know exactly why he was barking as well. So it wasn't his fault. 
His friend Archie has just gone past. I heard him barking. So the, it's his best friend. Their best, bestest friends. And around this time, six o'clock, six, between six, between quarter to six and quarter to seven, kind of around this time, they're out. Sort of six o'clock-ish time. Well, Vinny and uh, Archie, they they basically get off the lead and they run around, cuddle each other, kiss each other, play, fight, wrestle, dance, you name it, they do it. And now I've noticed that Archie started barking when he goes past here because he knows where Vinny lives. He's never been up here, but he knows that we come into this, into this building and he can probably smell him, he can probably hear him. And Archie lives at the end of the road, turn, turn right and across the road. So he's less than five minute walk from here probably three minutes depends it de it's hard it depends how fast you walk how long your legs are so i mean if you if you're being pushed in a wheelbarrow you get there quicker <laughs> i don't know why you'd be pushing a wheelbarrow so oh oh you know the other day something happened and i laughed and didn't i had to stop myself laughing because i was also worried Vinny was on the edge of the bed at the bottom of the bed I was in bed and he was asleep and I heard a thud. He fell off the bed. He was asleep and he fell off and he was he was then he was at the side of the bed looking at me. He was very bewildered. So he jumped up and I just kind of give him a bit of a cuddle. I'm trying not to laugh because it just I don't know why I just found it hilarious. But at the same time he wasn't injured, he wasn't, but it, I think he was frazzled by the fact that he was asleep and suddenly woken up like that must, well it is, I, I've done it myself, I've fallen out of bed in the past, it's, it's a weird experience, it can't happen anymore because I'm, I'm at a wall and I've got a wardrobe at the head, not a wardrobe, um, a set of drawers on the other side, but at, like where the pillows are, so it's pretty much impossible for me, for me to fall out of bed, which is good, unless I fall through the wall. Although I did kick the wall and break my foot, didn't I? Break my toe just before Christmas, I think it was. Um, in a dream, I was dreaming that I was being chased, and I realised if I just turn around and kick them, the force of them coming towards me and the force of my leg, my foot would be like such a, it, you know, it would be a, a winning formula. So I did kick, but I actually did kick in reality and I broke my foot, well, I broke me, just broke my big toe and still not wearing socks. Couldn't wear socks all the way through for two months pretty much. It, it's, I couldn't get them on. I got quite big feet. Got t I'm size ten, and the the big toe on my right foot it was a lot bigger than it normally is. And if it had been one of the smaller toes, I probably would have been okay f wearing socks. But I couldn't get them on without it hurting. And I still haven't worn any socks. I went through the whole of winter without any socks on. Strange, I know. I thought it would uh, be weird, but it wasn't. It wasn't as weird as I thought. I thought it'd be like really cold, but I mean it was, but it didn't. F I didn't feel cold in my feet necessarily. I mean I wasn't walking around barefooted. That would be weird. But I didn't have any socks on. Yeah. Why am I telling you about the socks? So I'm in the guard, I'm in the, the park, and the phone rings just as my friend is leaving. So I see her, bye. Phone rings. It's like, oh, brilliant. I, I didn't want to really answer the phone in a public place because I would be answering personal questions. So 
I walked very slowly through the park, talking to the doctor, and there wasn't really anyone near where I was, so I kind of uh, made my way home, and I stood in the front garden bit for probably about 10 minutes talking to him. It's quite a long conversation, actually, but it turns out that I need a blood test, so we've done the medication review, so that was done. Asked me a few questions about that. And then he wanted to know about, um, you know, any side effects or anything that's going on. Apparently, so I, there's a couple of medical things that are in my family that, uh, so macro degeneration, uh, eye thing. My nan had that. My, I think my uncles and aunts have got that. My dad's got it. So there's a possibility that. I mean, that's why I've got shaded glasses to try and protect my eyes because there's a potential I might have have it in the future or I don't know, hopefully not. But I do get eye strain. But that's probably because I'm looking at computer screens too much. The second thing is the prostate. There's prostate issues. I won't go into that, but there's prostate issues with my family all the men in my that I know of in my family I don't know about cousins and stuff but uncles and dad and stuff anyway um, I said to the doctor while you're doing a blood test is there any <laughs> is there any way I'm not going to say who it is, but someone said to my dad, uh, we were talking about getting a prostate exam, and this person thought that the prostate was in the throat, was in the mouth. Like, that to go in, like, that's funny. That's very funny. Um, so, it's not, by the way. Um, so, yeah, anyway. Um, I I said, is there any way of getting a blood test to check my prostate health uh, or get it checked as part of the blood test? He said, no, but you can request to have something, have, have come back and have a test of that kind. I said, I don't really want to be probed. He said, we don't actually call it probing. But I know what you mean. I said, okay, good. Because, I don't know. Last time, the doctor told me I didn't have to hold me, I didn't have to hold my cheeks open so wide. And that just embarrassed me. And he said, last time, I said, no. Nah, I, I, anyway, any, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really want to go through that. He said, well... He said, "I was just have a have a word with a with the nurse and see what she says." So that's what I'll do. And the other thing is the the, the acid reflux the acid reflux tablets that I take can cause issues with bone density, which I didn't know. And he said, "Have you had any fractures or anything like that? You know, lately." Because I've been on these tablets for a decade as well. And I said, well, yeah. I've had a broken toe a few months ago. I had two broken toes last year. Um, the year before, I had a broken rib. And at the end of that year, I fractured my back in two places. And a couple of years before that, I broke my hand and I fractured my wrist. And he said, oh, well, perhaps you need to get tested for your bone density. Because it could it could be a problem with osteoporosis. And I said, that's also in my family. But it's mainly in the female side. So my aunties my nan had it i think my aunties have got it 
maybe some cousins, but I don't know about the males. And and he said, well, it's not just a female thing. I said, I know that. Like, when you're trying to, what are you trying to imply that I'm trying to make out it's just a female thing? I know that, but it is predominantly a female issue, which is scientifically correct. So you know, but men do get it as well. I so I might might need to go look into that. So yeah, my lad, uh, I actually did. I mean, she was really elderly, but that's not really the point. She was in her eighties. She ninety. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was about eighty-five when I did some hypnosis with her to help her with her shoulder because her bones were crumbling because she had osteoporosis and she was very elderly, and. I helped her, and I, I, I remember I sat there with her for, it was in the kitchen. She was worried I'd get um, biscuit crumbs on the city. I always like to eat biscuits when I do hypnosis with people. And the weird thing about it is she was sitting there, and I'd be talking to her, and she'd be answering me, and she wasn't supposed to answer me. I mean, it's, there's no law, there's no rules, it's, but like I couldn't just say can you shut up because she's my nan but like stop talking and she just kept talking and like why can't you be a lot more like me nan and just quiet and reserved and just never speak hardly ever and I'm just realising that maybe <laughs> maybe I take after my nan maybe I don't know um yeah, possibly. I don't, definitely don't take after my granddad because he hardly said a word. Not to me, anyway. It was a very quiet, silent, strong type. And I'm... I don't know what I am. I've got no idea what I am. I have zero self-awareness. I don't know. I'm something, but not sure what it is. Constantly changing. Depends upon the day. Depends upon the time of the day. Depends depends upon my mood, as it were. So, I'm sitting, oh yeah, I'm sitting there doing the hypnosis with her, about 40 minutes. At the end, she says, oh, and it's basically, I guess, relaxation, focusing on her shoulder, focusing on her whole body, relaxing, but focusing really on her shoulder, and focusing on, I could see the sun was shining, so like focusing on the sun, shining on men, like melted butter and whatever, stuff like that. And she jumped up, said, well, I've got to put it into the fridge. I said, no, it's not. She like, I distracted her by talking about butter and she like, well, I don't want it to get melted. I'm like, get sit down. It's a meta, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. A metaphor? Yeah, a metaphor. Oh, metaphor. Yes, a metaphor. A metaphor. And she, after about 45 minutes, she opened her eyes and she looked around and she started moving her shoulder. She even put her hand way higher above her head than normal. I mean, she literally, she was touching the ceiling. I don't know how she did it. It's almost like her arms turned it in, part of her body turned into E.T. And it's like suddenly her arms were stretching and very weird. And she looked at me and said, oh, oh, I said, and I was like feeling really pleased with myself because I'd done some pain relief, and this is what, 2004, it's before I was really doing it properly, like in recordings or even with people, and she said, oh, 
it's, it's gone. There's, there's no pain. There's no pain there. It's just relaxed. It's not how she used to speak. She was like, there's no more pain in there. It's all relaxed now, just on her. Because uh, she was French. And she just, you know what she said to me? Oh, it must be the sun. It must be the sun shining in. It's been shining on my shoulder, so it's warmed my shoulder up. And that's why it feels okay. That's why it feels better. Okay, then. Nothing to do with the last 45 minutes where I've just literally been sitting here talking to you about your shoulder becoming more relaxed and, you know, pain-free. And uh, she just, it was, it was like, oh. It's one of them moments. It was a... <sighs> Why do I bother? So, it's a shame because like, I probably have everybody that I ever did pain relief with, apart from really extreme situations. My nan was the person I probably, well, I, get, I wanted to help the most. And I wanted to help everyone the most in the moment. But, you know, the idea of helping her was, it meant everything, but, oh well. But it's okay, it doesn't bother me now. 20 years later, I'm still talking about it. So, I was sitting in the park. The phone rings and I walk back. And, so that's cool. So I've, I've made this appointment which is next week. Going to have a blood test and then I need to try and make appointments for a bone density testing and some kind of prostate thing. I don't know. Yeah. So we'll just see. I mean, it's... Hmm. Hmm. I... I... Mm. I... I remember years ago... I had... I can't even remember what it was. But... I do know that they... The doctor said, well, if this doesn't... This is when I was probably 38, 39, 40... Maybe the doctor said, oh, I might have to do a prostate exam. And I remember sitting there because I was waiting for the results. I went back to get the results of previous tests. And I was so, I mean, I, to say I was uptight is um, an overstatement, an understatement rather, not an overstatement, an understatement. That'd be boring, wouldn't it? To say I was tense is an overstatement. And I wasn't tense at all. I was very tense, very uptight. Um, I remember when they called my name and what came up on the TV, you know, it went ding, ding, and the name came up. I stood up and I walked into the, um, walked towards the doctor's office. The chair was still attached to my bum. I basically was so uptight, I'd sucked the chair in. I couldn't get it off. People were laughing, which I think is a bit inappropriate. But no, 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 no customers, just the staff. And it's really weird because I stood there because I the thought there's there wasn't enough room for another chair, to be honest. And he said, "Good news." I can see your stress. Good news. We don't need to do any other tests. We don't need to do a prostate exam today. And it's weird. All you heard is me going, Phew. well, actually, you heard three things. You heard him going, because he was he seemed more relieved than me. And I'm like, Phew. and then you heard the sound of the chair hitting the ground. Because I relaxed. 
but it was I'm not sure if I'd really want to yeah I'm not sure if it really appeals to me I know a friend of mine okay this is just I'm going to say this quickly <laughs> this is absolutely true my friend went to the doctor because he was constipated that was the reason he went to the doctor for constipation the doctor gave him pills those were the days or oh, he gave him his prescription those are the days when he used to write it out this is quite long it's the 90s so he wrote it out and gave him the prescription out of a prescription pad and so he was getting up ready to go and they said oh why are you here Mr. Jason's friend we might as well do a do a prostate exam because he's he's about 15 years older than me I think so he would have been in his 40s or whatever 50 or whatever then and he said are you serious the daughter said yeah well he said look I've just come here I've told you I'm constipated it's not a good idea to be sticking your you know, I'm mean, just just saying this. And the doctor said, "Don't worry, it's fine." Without going into details, it wasn't fine. And the office couldn't be used for the rest of the week. That's all I'm saying. I mean, the doctor didn't listen, and my friend didn't need the medication either. So it was all sorted, kind of. I mean, that was just weird. Just, I mean, this is a true story. It wasn't, I'm not made up. Another time he phoned me up, the same friend, phoned me up from work. It was his business. And he said, uh, can you do me a favor? Can you phone up the office? Which was like in the same building that he was at. I said, well, where are you? He said, I'm in the toilet. I said, yeah, why don't you call the office? He said, I can't. I've got literally got no battery left on my phone and I need to I need to use it and make sure it gets... I need to make use of the battery, you know, the, the whatever charge, because once it runs out, I'm in trouble. I said, why? He said, I've run out of toilet roll. I stopped laughing. He said, please phone the office and ask them to bring me some toilet roll. I said, so you're not going to phone him? He said, I've tried to phone him three times. They're engaged. They're busy working. They're taking phone calls. If I keep phoning them, my battery's going to go and I'm going to be stuck here forever. Which is a little bit of an exaggeration, I think. But I couldn't stop laughing. So he's phoned me, the other side of the country, because he's in the toilet, run out of toilet roll. He's the boss, okay? He wants me to phone his staff and ask them to bring him, their boss, some toilet roll. Oh, I said, all right, I did it. So I phoned up. I had his number. I had his office number on there anyway on my phone. Phoned up and they were literally could not stop laughing. It was, I know it's, it might not sound funny, me, me telling the story, but it was such a funny thing. It's just just imagining him sitting there with no toilet paper, literally probably very close to where the office is. So it wasn't a big building, but he couldn't. <laughs> he was stuck, and his battery was about to run on it out on his phone. So he had like maybe any second it was going to run out. Um. He's still there. I <laughs> know. So that that was yeah, that was funny. That was very funny. So so that's really yes, the medical stuff out of the way. I didn't know I was gonna talk about things. Oh oh so I'm going back to this. Net pay. It's another pay slip from the same company. This is the car insurance. This was at the end. 28th for the 2nd 
2014. 986 pound 4 pence. So at this point. So I was paying tax. So I don't know. I'm confused. I pay tax then. This is statutory. Oh, 2014. Wow, so 2013, so I was still getting statutory, statutory sick pay in the second 2014. But then I've got statutory sick pay and it says £35.38. That's how much I got. So I'm confused and this was on the 31st of the 8th, 2013. I'm confused, I really, just generally in life. And then I've got the 31st of the 3rd, 2014, statutory sick pay, £442.87. So I got charged tax and national insurance on that. And then statutory statutory sick pay oh, this is bad isn't it it's like all I did was get a sick pay again £421.06 pence. Uh, eventually they sacked me <laughs> um, which I guess technically I'm not sure if they were allowed to because I was under a psychiatrist and it wasn't like I was just phoning in you know, not going in. I just, I, I tried to go back twice. I actually did go back twice and uh, didn't quite last. The first time I went back, they put me in a new team and I fell off the chair. I thought, this is not a good start. £1,458.30 pence. This is the 31st of the 3rd, 2013. I think it's the 3rd. Yeah, I think it is. So £1,458.30. So with this, I got a salary of £1,083.33, shift premium of £26, and target bonus of £489.78. So... There's no tax, but there's a £115.81 national insurance, £25 student loan. The next one, again, not in numerical uh, order, statutory sick pay, £55.56, 31st of the 10th, 2013. So, is that what, is that what I was getting a month? £55. That's not a lot of money is it um statute of sick pay this was 30 for the 11th 2013 448 pounds 74 so it's getting taxed 84 pounds 60 from that the next one 1029 pound 41 pence and this was the 31st of the 12th, 2012. So that was my first paycheck. Nash, that was my basic salary. No tax, just national insurance of 53.92 taken off. And I didn't get any bonus or anything because I hadn't earned any bonus. 1,029. Because I was in training pretty much for those, most of that time. And then the last one I got here is from the 30th of April 2013 1,382.94 take home and so I got a shift pattern of thir shift premium of £31 over time £5 really? oh no I'll fight so it's £33.33 I'm not quite sure how they worked that out target bonus £597.59 Unpaid sick leave, £25. Unpaid sick leave. I think I had a day off, I think. I must have done. 
unpaid sick is how can they pay me and then call it unpaid sick leave so they pay me 25 pound but it's called unpaid sick leave that doesn't make sense does it uh, tax £196.40, national insurance one thirty four ninety one, student loan £36. So I got charged, I paid one, I got paid one three, one thousand three hundred eighty two ninety four. Again, this is the 30th of April 2013. And that's, that's all of them. So I haven't got the ones from later on. And I've got stuff here like um, just housing benefit things. I've got uh, as legends go, you're the most legendist. Thank you for always boring me to sleep. You're one in a million. Lots of love, Gemma. So that's uh, I think that's a, that's a birthday card, I think. I've got another birthday card. 50 doesn't sound that old really um that's from rachel thank you rachel this is a couple of years back isn't it three years ago nearly and this is from molly i've got a card here happy christmas from australia the lighting's not allowing me to read this because the lighting's not great right now or it might be my eyesight need to oh yeah here we go thanks for all that you do i listen to let me bore you to sleep every night p.s i found this book and thought you might find it funny um hi jason i originally got these for you for christmas but the expiry is december so best to offer them now i think you could keep the larger one for christmas and if you like me you're like me, you won't be able to. Merry Christmas, love Molly. Molly, when was this? Was this... This was... Well, thank you. I can't remember when that was. I can't, I can't even... You know what? This Christmas wasn't Christmas, <laughs> to be fair, for me. It wasn't... It just wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. And it was never going to be. There's no way it could have been. But it's fine. But so this is from a couple of years ago, I think. Might have been from this Christmas. This is something I found, which I'm very confused about. And this is dated the 10th of the 5th, 06, 2006. Okay. J. Just had a two-hour session uh, I don't, sorry, sorry, but I had to say you were my wife again. I genuinely don't understand a lot of what's being written there. What I don't know if this was just something that was in a book that I bought. It might have been. It just happens to have J at the top. Because some people call me J. Like friends call me J. Jason. Jace J. Um, I remember I knocked on someone's door. And I said, oh, it's... Oh, I phoned someone. I said, it's Jason. Jason who? Oh, J. I mean, I I introduce myself as Jason. I don't introduce myself to anyone as Jace or Jay. Juicy JJ sometimes. That gets a few weird looks, but it's Jason. I, I answer to pretty much anything. I don't care. But I don't introduce myself. You know when you, someone, you meet someone says, What's your name? Oh, my name's AJ. No, it's not. What's your actual name? It's DJ. No, that's not DJ. What's your actual name? Uh, you can just call me K-Man. No, that's not your name, is it? What's your name? Eminem. No. Okay, well, I like Eminem. It's just like, no. If that's what people... It's, no. What's your actual name? 
at least but my, most people call me so my name's uh just like john boy that wasn't his real name it was just john wasn't it is it middle he didn't have a middle name boy it wasn't john boy uh, I'm still annoyed about that dear jason just a hug in a moment. thank you to uh, give andre a kiss blimey so this is quite a long long time ago so i keep i keep cards i've got some in my in a in a cupboard as well any cards or letters or thank you notes anything i get from people regarding the stuff i do i always keep them uh, so that's uh that's that whole my birth certificate it's nearly in pieces i found this i thought i'd lost it and it is oh do you want to see what it says <laughs> 26 is this i was born in south south something hospital Enfield. So, mother. See, this is weird because it it says to me like I thought her name was Francesca. But, it's spelled. It looks like F R A N C E S, E. It doesn't look like an A. Francis. I know that I think people used to call her Fran. Um, so if you know my mum, she's born in Tunbridge, Tunbridge Wells, Kent. And then his, this here, yeah. The maiden name. is I've even got the address of where I was born do you want the address of where I was born that's personal information I don't care 158 uh, Scotland Green Road North Enfield that's not where I was born I was born in a hospital but that's where I lived when I was very first a baby 158 Scotland Green Road, North Enfield. I just realised. So my dad was the one that signed it. Oh, God, I've got it. Yeah, so that's why it's just worn out. He did it. I can see how it should have matched up now got it got it got it got it got it got it francesca i mean that might have just that might have been c and there might be an a francesca but it was admitted because it just because this is a i guess this is probably a photocopy of an original one from a long long time ago 1970 oh this is yeah so this is a photocopy and this is my dad got me this this is from the 29th of may 1990 my dad got me this because he said you'd need this to get passports driving licenses things like that so it's good to have which it has been it has been i've got a new updated version though it's not updated. I mean, <laughs> I'm now born in 1983. Uh, what else have I got? So this. What's rent account statement? That's a bit point. That's no point having that. I can go on a pile of crap. Um, I've got a criminal check. Criminal check here from 18th of August 2014. Volunteer. Uh huh. 
Volunteer receptionist admin. Child and adult workforce. Colchester mind. So. Standard certificate. This document is a standard criminal record certificate with the meaning, blah, blah. So what does it say? What are my results? Uh, so basically, it just... You only get one of these when everything's clear. Everything's all good. This is weird because I... I used to work for Mind. Well, I was self-employed and I did counselling for Mind before this period. It finished in 2013. I think. Maybe 2014. Two, no, 2013. About April time, I think it was. May. And... They... I really liked the place and they did help me in my when I needed help they helped me to get help you know from the so social services regarding getting a um, social worker and so that that was good it was very embarrassing for me to go back there as a client but then when I thought well I'll, I'll volunteer to show my appreciation and I'll volunteer as just an administration or do something like that and they were really good, but then this woman that used to be friendly to me was really rude to me. Like really kind of, I was only there for maybe four hours. I might have, I might have done more than one thing. I might have been there, I went there a few times, I can't remember. But she was just rude, like really, not actually verbally rude, rude. So I thought, ah, that's it, done with that. I didn't go back. Oh, here's a photocopy. The is a photocopy of my birth certificate, the original one, or the one from um, 29th of May, 1970. So I've got that. Now I know I do have a birth certificate, an updated version. Your student loan statement. Oh, look at this. Look at this, everyone. This is from the 19th of June, 2019. And, oh, wow. So the student loan I borrowed um, opening the about six of the fourth, two thousand and ten. Seventeen thousand and sixty five pound thirteen pence. Uh Total loans borrowed during statement period. £27,000. £27,2761.36. Total interest applied during statement period. £2,521.82. Total repayments received during statement period. £122. Wow, and that was from the job I had, wasn't it? So, closing debit balance, 5th of the 4th, 2019. So, this is how much I owed on my my student loan in April, five years ago. Blimey, five years. £22,226.31. pence. Ugh. It's going through. I've got a list of all the the interest rates. Interest thirty for twenty six pound a month. Interest every month. Month in, month out. And it's going up twenty seven pound, twenty six seven. What every month? Regardless. So whoa, 
Ooh. All the way up to 2020. Oh, now it's... It was um, £32.72 pence a month during March 2019. So, it's probably like 50 quid a month now. Something like that. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, this is rent account statement. I don't know why I've got that. That's just rubbish. Don't need that. I'm going in the bin. Rent account statement. More rubbish. Because that gets paid anyway. And that's nearly all of the stuff. I found some... This is for Mary. A letter dated the 23rd of... 23rd of... Something. 2021. J-A-Y? 23rd of... Ju January. No, it's January. 31st of January. 2021. Hi, Jason. I'm not going to read it out. It's personal. I can't read it. Hi, Jason. Sometimes I imagine that you're blonde and you're much taller than you are in real life. And I imagine that you're really handsome and not how you really look. <sighs> anyway, so... Um, I've got a statement here. This is weird. This is weird. And this is from... This is from Mind. So when I was, I was you know, was working... Not for them, but with them. Self-employed, and I was getting paid, I think, what, £25 an hour for, for each client. And this is a date from the 1st of the 4th, 2012, to the 31st of the 3rd, 2013. And that's probably when I stopped. And it's just got all the purchase payment. It's got the payments I had during that period. And it wasn't a lot, really. Um, £1,047.60. But then the next one was £185. The next one was £150. That was a different month. I need to work it out how many, really, I was getting like £300 a month from them. I mean, I felt really fortunate that I was able to, and let me tell you what happened, yeah. I loved Colchester, I loved, I can't stop saying this, I loved Mind, I loved working at Mind. Um, I also loved the other charity that I worked, that I uh, did counselling for as well which was uh, Youth youth Counselling Service. And I applied for MIND to become a counsellor because they were looking for people and I got turned down. I was qualified, but the lady didn't like me. It was very clear. She didn't, I don't know why, but she just, she said, no, you're never going to work here. I didn't really, couldn't really figure it out. And then, but I was, I got on really well with, what we did is we sometimes used to share training. So the the youth charity would go to trainings that would be attended by people that also counseled at Mind. So I got to know some of the, some of the people that worked at Mind. And maybe that's why she just took a dislike to me. She didn't like the way I was acting or something. Um, I wore trousers most of the time. And she, maybe during the interview, like I, I said, look, it clearly is, hasn't gone very well, this interview, because we actually had an interview and we knew each other, like name and stuff. 
And I said, it's clearly not going very well. Because you told me there and then, it's not mine. I'm, they wanted, I think they needed two counsellors and there was better prospects or something. I said, well, can I get a few, some pointers for next time, you know, when I get, when I next apply for counselling work, maybe interview skills or something, anything that I can correct. And she said, well, try not picking your nose during the interview. I said, what? She said, don't pick your nose. I'm like, oh, I didn't realise I was doing it. She said, yeah, that's that's just something. Um, but eventually, her assistant gave me work. So she left, and her assistant took over temporarily, and she gave me loads of work. So she liked me, and then the new boss liked me, and yeah, 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 it went good. So I'm going to go, because I hear the chip vans here, and I'm going to get myself some chips. Have them in chips for ages. Just have a nice portion of chips, maybe a sausage. So take care. Remember to be kind to yourself. You deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye.